Uh, Marshall is asking the Lord Chancellor to deliver the speech. So Robert Buckland makes his way towards the throne. Presents it to Her Majesty. And turns around. And the Queen's speech, this new Conservative government, is about to be unveiled. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, my government's priority is to deliver the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union on the 31st of January. My Ministers will bring forward legislation to ensure the United Kingdom's exit on that date and to make the most of the opportunities that this brings for all the people of the United Kingdom. Thereafter, my Ministers will seek a future relationship with the European Union based on a free trade agreement that benefits the whole of the United Kingdom. They will also begin trade negotiations with other leading global economies. The integrity and prosperity of the United Kingdom is of the utmost importance to my government. My ministers will work urgently to facilitate talks to restore devolved government in Northern Ireland. My government will embark on an ambitious program of domestic reform that delivers on the people's priorities. For the first time, the National Health Service's multi-year funding settlement agreed earlier this year will be enshrined in law. Steps will be taken to grow and support the National Health Service's workforce, and a new visa will ensure qualified doctors, nurses, and health professionals have fast-track entry to the United Kingdom. Hospital car parking charges will be removed for those in greatest need. My ministers will seek cross-party consensus on proposals for long-term reform of social care. They will ensure that the social care system provides everyone with the dignity and security they deserve, and that no one who needs care has to sell their home to pay for it. My ministers will continue work to reform the Mental Health Act. A modern, fair, point-based immigration system will welcome skilled workers from across the world to contribute to the United Kingdom's economy, communities and public services. My government will bring forward measures to support working families, raising the national insurance threshold and increasing the national living wage, to ensure every child has access to a high-quality education my ministers will increase levels of funding per pupil in every school. <coughs> Measures will be brought forward to encourage flexible working, to introduce the entitlement to leave for unpaid carers, and to help people save for later life. New measures will be brought forward to protect tenants and to improve building safety. My government will take steps to support home ownership, including by making homes available at a discount for local first-time buyers. My ministers will develop legislation to improve internet safety for all. My government is committed to a fair justice system that keeps people safe. My ministers will establish a royal commission to review and improve the efficiency and effectiveness of the criminal justice process. New sentencing laws will ensure the most serious violent offenders, including terrorists, serve longer in custody. New laws will require schools, police, councils and health authorities to work together to prevent serious crime. My government will ensure those charged with knife possession face swift justice, and that the courts work better for all those who engage with them, including victims of domestic abuse. 
Legislation will be brought forward to support victims of crime and their families. Measures will be developed to tackle hostile activity conducted by foreign states. My ministers will bring forward measures to ensure that every part of the United Kingdom can prosper. My government will invest in the country's public services and infrastructure whilst keeping borrowing and debt under control, maintaining the sustainability of the public finances through a responsible fiscal strategy. My government will prioritise investment in infrastructure and world-leading science research and skills in order to unleash pro productivity and improve daily life for communities across the country. It will give communities more control over how investment is spent so that they can decide what is best for them. To support business, my government will increase tax credits for research and development, establish a national skills fund, and bring forward changes to business rates. New laws will accelerate the delivery of gigabit capable broadband. To ensure people can depend on the transport network, measures will be developed to provide for minimum levels of service during transport strikes. My government will continue to take steps to meet the world-leading target of net zero greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. It will continue to lead the way in tackling global climate change, hosting the COP26 summit in 2020. To protect and improve the environment for future generations, a bill will enshrine in law environmental principles and legally binding targets, including for air quality. It will also ban the export of polluting plastic waste to countries outside the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, and establish a new world-leading independent regulator in statute. A constitution, democracy, and rights commission will be established. Work will be taken forward to repeal the Fixed-Term Parliaments Act. My government will continue to invest in our gallant armed forces. My government will honour the Armed Forces Covenant, which will be further incorporated into law, and the NATO commitment to spend at least 2% of national income on defence. It will bring forward proposals to tackle vexatious claims that undermine our armed forces, and will continue to seek better ways of dealing with legacy issues that provide better outcomes for victims and survivors. My government will work to promote and expand the United Kingdom's influence in the world. An integrated security, defence and foreign policy review will be undertaken to reassess the nation's place in the world, covering all aspects of international policy, from defence to diplomacy and development. My ministers will promote the United Kingdom's interests, including freedom of speech, human rights and the rule of law. My government will work closely with international partners to help solve the most complex international security issues and to promote peace and security globally. It will stand firm against those who threaten the values of the United Kingdom, including by developing a sanctions regime to directly address human rights abuse and working to ensure that all girls have access to 12 years of quality education. Members of the House of Commons, estimates for the public services will be laid before you. My Lords and Members of the House of Commons, other measures will be laid before you. I pray that the blessing of Almighty God may rest upon your councils.
So the Queen's speech has been delivered for this new Conservative government and that was quite a list of proposed legislation, the most packed list that we've heard for a very long time. Um, and the Queen uh, outlined proposed legislation in a wide range of uh, areas of activity there. Uh, certainly more than enough to fill a five-year period, though questions about how long a parliamentary period is will be asked again, given what was said there in terms of the Fixed-Term Parliament Act, mm -hmm. which we can possibly refer to with my guests in, in a few moments' time. But uh, the Queen and the Prince of Wales leaving the Chamber of the House of Lords now, back in the procession and making their way back into the Royal Gallery and uh, back into the robing room, ready for the Queen to leave. and. Uh, ready, I suppose, to prepare for Christmas with uh, the family and uh, normally spent in Sandringham. Uh, so that's just uh, six days away. But a bit of work to be done in Parliament before then, including tomorrow, as Laura was saying earlier, with the uh, withdrawal uh, agreement bill. So as the crown is being taken and uh, the Queen and the Prince are making their way, Laura, um, your immediate response to that very long list of proposed activity. Well, top of the list, of course, is getting the Brexit legislation through, as we would expect, and, and then second to that, as we were mentioning earlier, the health service. But beyond that, as you suggest, I mean, there is tons on this agenda, not just things that were in the Conservative manifesto, which was actually quite a slim document, yeah. deliberately not trying to you know, create too much risk as they went into the general election. But there's plenty of legislation on there, whether it's toughening up criminal sentencing, whether it's acting to look at um, potential injustices in terms of prosecutions of former soldiers yeah. in Northern Ireland. We were hearing from one of the new Northern Irish MPs how controversial that kind of action might be. But beyond even the legislation that they have planned, a few things standing out. Promises of reviews, promises of reviews of our foreign policy and our defence and security in the real world, a review too of how the courts operate, yes. a review too of the Constitution and Rights Commission. So that will be a, a new commission will be set up to look at the Constitution, how government works, what the relationship is between Whitehall. Now, that is the kind of thing where you think today might be the start of this government's ambition, not the limit of it. You know, there are quite a few openings of doors there um, that might create rather a lot of interest, raise a few eyebrows and think that ultimately, once we get into the sort of proper day-to-day -day of Boris Johnson's government, which I think you know, will be after Brexit in February, the government, I think, will actually may come forward with, with plans that um, <laughs> might seem by today's mm. comparison to be rather radical and that actually for me is one of the fundamental questions of this new government with a majority like this there's a lot they can do but how many fights do they really want to pick do they want to make a focus of two or three issues and really really power through them or do they want to start really trying to sort of unplug the way the country works and we can see some of the MPs just leaving the chamber there are some new faces and some old as they come through 